at a time when there were few women in the professional world, when we weren't even allowed to vote, Julia was a real trailblazer. She paved the path, not just for women architects, but for all women. She faced many challenges in the male-dominated architecture industry. She is a living proof that no matter the obstacles, no matter the status quo, you can achieve greatness. Julia Morgan loved architecture, and she loved sharing architecture with people. So she didn't make a difference between what William Randolph Hearst wanted to what the Berkeley Women's Club wanted. She was a client's architect. She would listen to the client and through their eyes she would develop something that was important to them. So the client always felt very much a part of the process. Created a style that brought culture and nature together. She designed with meaning and she designed with purpose because she wanted to improve the quality of their lives. She wanted to enhance communities and she even allowed her work to become a catalyst for societal change, especially in furthering the lives of women. And considering the social milieu at the time, to think that her work would play such a significant role is, is really remarkable. Well, I think the key thing is uh, that she's a professional. She was a consummate artist. Uh, she took her education seriously. And she loved math and, and physics and music. She was very good at violin and she was very good at piano. So she was just tenacious in, and focused in anything that she tried from a little child. Many, many times the only woman, she was the only woman in her class at Cal, in her civil engineering class. She was the only woman in her atelier in Paris. She was the first woman in the world to be admitted to Le Col de Beaux-Arts. Her grace while dealing with these types of obstacles was amazing. In 1906, Julia Morgan helped with disaster recovery after the earthquake, rebuilding the Fairmont Hotel. The ceilings had fallen seven feet. The beautiful atrium had melted, and Julia Morgan was part of the group that was chosen, really, to show that San Francisco was not Pompeii. She was one of the few people at that time who really understood concrete. The Greek theater had to be built in time for uh, Teddy Roosevelt to come give the commencement address. She placed 6,000 yards of concrete as the supervising architect the contractor was so impressed with her that he asked her to design and build him uh, the first reinforced concrete house on the West Coast. She showed that reinforced concrete could be used in seismic country. She started San Simeon in 1919 and it was job number 503 for her firm. She designed more than 700 buildings in her career. Hearst first asked her to come to the hilltop uh, by having two saddled horses uh, at the end of the taxi road, and she said, I'm 47, I've never been on a horse, that's not changing today. So they got to the hilltop by putting her in the taxi, driving it up the trails and using the horses to pull when the going got tough. San Simeon took 28 years to build. Asilomar took almost that long, 15 years. It was Julia Morgan's second lengthiest project and the largest arts and crafts complex of its kind. And the trusses, which you can see above, they're just natural tree limbs. And she had a good sense of structure to know that it would survive and add the character of playfulness to the living room. Asilomar says to me that it is really possible for the profession of architecture to yield so much fun, pleasure, and comfort She's just a, a spectacular American architect who happens to be a, a female. She was, however, selected by the women's movement to be their architect. She did a hundred buildings for women and women's organizations. She did YWCA's, she did community centers, 
These women raised their own money, used their own resources, and hired her. She designed in a very broad range, and always successfully. I'm a member of the Berkeley City Club. I swim in that pool several times a week. There's a range from the ornate to the very modest, the unassuming. However, it is Julia Morgan's ordinary that manifests itself in extraordinary ways. She made these beautiful light fixtures out of recycled materials for the Berkeley City Club, which was an organization that didn't have so much money. It's just wonderful blending of natural uh, materials, usually from the area where the buildings are constructed. Sustainability did not exist the way we know and see it now. Her approach is innovative, yet very practical. She moderated local climate to improve comfort conditions, and she does that primarily through passive design, uh, adaptability, and uh, resource conservation, all the aspects that are very relevant to us today. Julia Morgan had modern solutions uh, to architectural problems, even though she was using um, historic precedents in her designs. Her spaces, they are based on simple geometry. That is inherent with accommodating a range of functions, making the spaces very resilient to change, and they're able to absorb changing culture and lifestyle over the decades. Miss Morgan, as she was always known, she was so devoted to her work and to her calling that her structures and her buildings were her friends and family and children, really. And they have grandchildren. It's just as alive as, as we are. We look back and we try to imagine what life must have been like for these real pioneer women uh, at that time. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed at her will, her determination, and how much she accomplished. I'm so proud of her. 